Hey guys, I am crafting expert Bianca Octavia. If you have not met me yet, hello you guys. If you are back and this is not your first time seeing me on one of these live craft, bake, craft breaks, thank you guys for joining us back again. Today I will be showing you how to do a quick, simple and easy DIY back to school project. And even if you aren't going back to school, if you're a teacher or you just have some type of office and you want a really cool and quick, easy craft, this is for you guys. We will be upcycling this cereal box and turning it into a file organizer for your bookshelf, for your locker, for your desk, whatever it is that you would need it for. You can kind of see it over here to the left of me. This is what it will look like in the end. Right now we are going to do a slightly different design. That way you can see some different ways to mix it up. And today, the products that we will be using are Mod Podge, and we will also be using Treasure Gold Champagne. So we will go ahead and jump right into this project. As always, I love to know where everyone is from. So if you are watching from far away, even if you aren't far away, and you're not here in Atlanta with us, let us know where you are. Let us know how the weather is. And let us know what you're crafting and working on at the moment. So we'll go ahead and get into it. The first thing that you will need for this project is, of course, a cereal box. I think we all have these. Most of us have these. So after you grab your cereal box, you're then going to grab a ruler and a pencil. So for this project, let's go ahead and flip it this way. So we're going to start on the side. You can start from the other side, but I'm going to go ahead and start this way. So we're going to take our ruler and we're going to measure about seven inches up. And the measurements for this project, of course, depend on how big your cereal box is. Let's see how big mine is. It is about one foot in height. So I'm going to go up about seven inches from the bottom. And I'm going to make my first mark right there at the seven inch mark. Like I said, this all just kind of depends on how big your cereal box is. And you'll see what I mean once we start to make the cuts along our draw lines in just a few minutes here. Okay. So it is there. Hopefully you guys can see that. So that is our first line. I'm going to go ahead and flip our cereal box over to the side. Then I'm going to grab that ruler again. And right here where our line ends on the side, I'm going to draw a diagonal line that kind of connects to it. So I'm going to go ahead and slant my ruler. And we are going to draw another diagonal line across. All righty. All right. So that is our second line. It's kind of faint. Hopefully you guys can see that there. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over to its other side and we're gonna do the same thing. And let me just flip this back over so you guys can see what I did here. So this line that I drew here on the side, straight across, I connected it to the line over here on the side. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and flip this over and do the same thing. And because we measured that first line, you really don't have to measure over off to the sides because connecting it right there will kind of tell you exactly where you need for your other lines to land. So we're gonna go ahead and draw our last one. And we're gonna make sure that point or the end of our line ends right here at the tip of our cereal box. All right, so let's go ahead and set our ruler and our pencil off to the side and we're gonna go ahead and start cutting. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this around. You guys let me know what your favorite cereal is. <laughs> yeah, I'll be watching the comments in here if you guys have yeah. any questions for Bianca. All right, guys. So I flipped the box upside down. It makes it a little bit easier to cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting across those lines. All right. 
So while we're waiting on everybody to tell us where they're from and what their favorite cereal is, I'll go ahead and go first. I think my favorite cereal is Apple Jacks. Apple Jacks and Reese's Puffs. I think those are my two favorite cereals. And classics. <laughs> And I think the cereal I like the least, but I will force myself to eat it if it's around, is Raisin Bran. <laughs> you know, you bring up a good point. If you do have a favorite cereal, you know, we're definitely here to show you crafting with Mod Podge, but you could also kind of get creative and keep like some of the branding on your box. Oh, and have, that's like, a great all idea. And then you could store them on a shelf and it would look like wow. you just have a bunch of cereal boxes. That's an amazing idea. You could embellish them. If you want, uh, pantry aesthetic. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so I went ahead and made those cuts and you can already see our file organizer taking form here. I'll go ahead and flip it around for you. And I love the idea that he just gave. Like if you kind of want to leave some of your branding out and you know you just want your pantry to basically label itself, this is a great way to do it. So that is how you cut your box. We are going to use scrapbook paper or cardstock and Mod Podge to cover this up. So, how you'll do that is flipping your box over and around and measuring out your sides. So we're gonna go ahead and trace them out. So let's see, let's start this way. As you're doing that, Bianca, we've got a lot of people uh, tuning in now. you got the, the cereal Yay. wars facing <laughs> off in here. Wars. We've got a lot of um, <laughs> Rice Krispies. Oh, um, Rice Krispies. Krispies that's a, a good thing. one. Yep. Uh, we've got some Boo Berry and Frosted Flakes. Boo Berry, that's a great one. Oh, Boo Berry. I've never yeah. heard of that. Yeah. Boo Berry? Mm -hmm. I have to look that one up, guys. I'm assuming it is Blueberry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So guys, this is a little slanted because it's easier for me to draw it this way, but hopefully you guys can kind of see it. So I am using a pencil and I'm just tracing out the sides of my box. So I'm just gonna draw a line across here. And I think it's smart to kind of start on the edge. That way that's just one extra line that you don't have to worry about cutting. It's already there for you. So let's go ahead and bring this back. And then I'm gonna flip this around one more time and then draw another line right down here. And then we're gonna repeat this for the other side and the front and the back. And we're gonna leave one side blank and I will tell you guys why as we inch towards the end here. Okay, so that is our first cut. While we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and draw out the back of the box. So again, let's bring that to the edge because that's just one extra line that we do not have to worry about cutting. I'm gonna go ahead and trace that out. And we've got a lot of people representing here. We've got Illinois, Ooh. Virginia, Tennessee. Illinois and Tennessee. I always drive through Tennessee to get to Illinois for my oh, family, there you go. <laughs> for my family reunion. <laughs> okay, so while we have these two cuts, let's go ahead and get them out of the way, and then we will cut out our other side. And I am making my organizer bicolor, so I'm going to use two different pinks here. So once I get these cut, I'm going to go ahead and grab my lighter pink. And I'm using cardstock. The reason I chose to go with cardstock is because I noticed when I use cardstock, it laid a lot smoother than regular paper with the Mod Podge. It didn't wrinkle or crumple or get soggy. So I would strongly suggest using cardstock if you are going to wrap your box in paper. It's just a little bit heavier. It's also nice because these are kind of all standard sizes yep. and the um, yep. most of the cardstock comes in 12 by 12 sheets, yep. so that's perfect. Absolutely, yep. It fits the box perfectly. Unless you are getting like the super duper family size. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you might have to combine some pages. So let's see. We'll lay this out just to see what we have here. And if you guys are just tuning in, we've got Bianca Octavia in the hey studio guys. today. And she is working on some great creative desk yeah. organizers. We are upcycling 
some old cereal boxes here and we are turning them into some really crafty and glam file organizers. These can be used for your dorm, they can be used for your desk, they can be used for lockers, they can be used for anywhere where you're keeping your stationery. So let's go ahead and grab our lighter colored cardstock and we're going to go ahead and lay out our box one more time and we are going to cut out two more sides. So again, if you are just tuning in, I'm gonna start off to the edge. That is just one less, one less line that we have to cut and we know for sure that it is straight. So I am gonna take my pencil here and trace it out just like this. And we got some comments here. So Booberry, this I, I totally remember this now. <laughs> Booberry is only available at Halloween. Oh, okay. So that's I a can special see that. edition. Yeah. I think it's under uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember the other cereal. Booberry. Yeah. Okay. Captain Crunch, I think, is kind of its the way it, it kind of tastes. Okay. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Oh, I love Captain Crunch. I forgot <laughs> about Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch will make your mouth hurt sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it does. Okay. Let's bring this up just a little and trace it. Trace this last side here. All right. And then we are going to trace out the front here. So I already went ahead and did the back and I did this side. And then let's flip this right here and trace out the front of our box. Sorry for all the twists and turns, guys. I hope you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> I have to navigate around this as best as I can so I can see and make sure that my lines are correct. Okay. One more line here, and I think we are good to go for our last pieces to cut. All right. There we go. So, let's go ahead and set our box off to the side for just a second. Let's go ahead and get that cut out. All righty. So yeah, like I said, you guys, this can be used for your lockers. I think this is a really fun project to do with your teens, your preteens, anyone who has a locker. I think this is really fun. I love upcycling old things and giving them new life. I think I would say that's my specialty when it comes to crafting. I try not to be a hoarder, but <laughs> I always see the best in things. I like to hold on to them and see what I can do with them. Everything's a craft supply. Everything, <laughs> everything is a craft supply. All right. So we have all of our pieces cut here, I believe. Go ahead and toss our scrap paper off to the side. And then we will move on to attaching all of these cut pieces onto our box. So like I said, I use two different pinks. Um, you guys, I'm sure I'll be on here quite often. I love pink. I'm definitely gonna try to switch it up and incorporate some other colors here, but I do love pink. That is my favorite color and I love using it in all of my craft projects. So, all right, let's go ahead and get to my podging. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pour a little bit here. I always turn my caps into my paint pans. So I'm just gonna use a sponge brush and I'm gonna lightly go over one side here. Let's see. I wouldn't suggest doing too, too much because you do want your paper to lay flat and you don't want it to start getting clumpy or soggy. Even though the cardstock that I'm using is a little bit heavier, I still just kind of want to be a little bit careful. And for this, if you're wondering, it doesn't really matter which formula you use. I am using matte here. So if you have that at home, that's great. But if you have any of the other formulas, they should work for you. Of course, you don't want to use the glow in the dark kind or anything like that. But if you have gloss or if you have matte, that those two should work pretty good. Okay, 
So I have it lightly covered here. We are going to go ahead and grab our first cut. I'm going to lay it on just like that. And we're going to line it up and swipe off some of this excess glue here. And don't be scared of any of the glue, guys. It will dry clear if it gets on anything. All right. Let's try to pull this over here just a little bit. All right. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to cover this down here later on. We're just going to go ahead and get our pieces on here first, our larger pieces. So that one is already on there pretty good. It is not moving. It already feels like it has gone ahead and locked in. So let's grab another piece and flip our box over. Let's do the back side. And let's grab our sponge brush one more time and add some more of our Mod Podge here. Like I said, you wanna lightly cover it. Not too much. All right. Then we're gonna grab this piece. And we're gonna lay it on just like this. Pull it up. And what I found is that if you put your pieces on and they are a little bit too big, maybe not even big, just like half of an inch off, you can just go around it with your scissors. So if we need to do that here, we can. All right, so that piece is on there pretty good. Let's go ahead and flip this over to the front side right here. We'll grab some more Mod Podge and add a light coat. And we are moving pretty quickly here. I think we are 75% of the way done, you guys. If anybody has any questions, let me know. And if you've done anything similar to this, let me know how yours turned out. If you've covered anything with scrapbook paper or Mod Podge, I would love to know. I love covering old things with Mod Podge in a beautiful scrapbook page or card stock, something with a really nice design on it. All right. So yeah, that stuck on pretty quickly, you guys. All right. So that part of the project is done. I am going to leave this blank, but I did cut out another piece just to show you. If you do want to cover it, again, you would just add your Mod Podge on and just lay it on. I am not going to cover this because we are actually going to combine this with another side that looks just like this, and we're going to join them together so there's no need to waste our beautiful, sometimes expensive car stock and scrapbook paper. So I'm going to set this one off to the side. We have one that is fully dried. So let's go ahead and get this one out of the way. And let's bring this one in. All right. So the next thing is, so if you have like edges that kind of show like this, you can easily cover them up. I went ahead and cut out some strips of a different color cardstock. So we're just going to add some more Mod Podge onto the back of these, and we're going to add them on there. So let's add a little bit onto the back of this. Let's actually bring some paper over here so that we can be neat crafters today. I am a messy crafter. I always get my area dirty. <laughs> I'm working on that. So put a little bit of paper up under your work area so that you don't have to come back later and do a big cleanup. So we'll just add a light coat here and just go over it. And then we will stick that on there. Now, right now, I am using a blank piece of cardstock, but you can get really creative and use any type of design. I'll go over this other set that I have here that's already made. I just wanted to be able to show you guys different options. I thought this one was more preteen friendly with the blank design. Well, it won't be blank when we finish, but a non-pre-designed paper. So that kind of made it look more finished. And we'll go around and we'll add a little bit more to some of our other sides. 
So let's grab our other strips here. And let's see. We'll go ahead and add on our bigger one. Let's bring our paper back over and add some Mod Podge to the back of this. Let's see, which one, which way does that go? Okay, that goes like this. So we're gonna flip this over and add Mod Podge to the back of this. Did we have anyone else checking in from any other states? I know we got Tennessee, Tennessee Illinois. Yeah. We got Illinois, Tennessee, Virginia. We've got some Georgia people here. That's hey, where Platt is located here, North hey, Carolina. Guys. The last time I was here, we had someone from Japan. Okay, yeah. yeah. We do have our occasional international yeah. viewers. Yeah, we had Japan and Jamaica. Jealous of both. <laughs> okay, so I added some Mod Podge to the back of this strip. We are going to go ahead and add that on here. We will slap that right on there. All right. We'll hold it down for a second. And then we're gonna flip this over and add some strips to the front of it. All right. So you can kind of see the different, the two-tone pinks here. Now, at home, if you really, really want to get detailed with this, if you want to cut your sides double, you could cover the inside of your box as well, but that's only if you want to get super, super detailed. Um, I'm not doing that here because I think that the books that I have at home just kind of covers that up, so I don't feel like that extra work is necessary, but if you have extra time, that is definitely something that you can do at home. So I have some other pre-cut strips here and we're just gonna add them to the front here. All right, let's bring our paper back over. All right, so we got one. We'll throw that on there. And I would suggest like cutting ahead of time, kind of like what we just did. I think that makes the project go by a lot faster. I think the work is actually always in the prep, not actually in making the project. And I think that's what helps any project go a lot more smoothly. So definitely take your time and cut out all of your strips if you'll be using strips ahead of time. All right, let's add a little bit more Mod Podge onto the back of this one. And then we just have two more left for our back. And then we will go in and have some fun with our treasure gold paint and try to see what we can come up with for our finishing design touches. Okay, so that is on there pretty good. Let's slide that up just a little bit and then let's flip this over to the back. Uh oh, we got a little Mod Podge on here, but that's okay, it'll dry clear. All right, we have two more strips to go. So let's bring this over and pull this up. All right. I think the last Mod Podge project that I did that was really fun was I turned a $1 gift box into a jewelry box. And the handle was like a little plastic toy animal from the dollar store. And I painted it with treasure gold and I turned that into the handle. If you guys want to see that, you can find me on Instagram at I am Bianca Octavia. It shouldn't be too far down. But that was really easy, and it's actually kind of similar to what we're doing. I just covered a box with the scrapbook paper and Mod Podge. The only difference is that I added on the handle, and the box actually closed up, so I didn't have to make any cuts to it. So let's see. We have our last strip here. We're going to add that on. All right, you guys, let me bring that back up so you can see it. And then we're gonna trim that one just a little bit. It's hanging off the edge a little bit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that. Grab my scissors. All right. So that is kind of what it should look like. Now you can go around and add trimming all around the side. You can get creative with this. This was the design that I chose. But definitely at home, if you want to add trimming all over your box, go for it. I would love to see it. 
Make sure you tag plaid, and if you want to tag me, I would love to see it personally as well. So, now that we are done covering our box, I'll go ahead and pull out the other side and show you why we didn't cover this one. So, I'm going to do this from the front view for a second. So, you can see that I didn't cover this other side either because at the end, we're going to add some Mod Podge right here in the middle and we're going to join these together and it's going to be one file organizer. But in the meantime, let's set that off to the side. I have, uh oh, wrong box. Let's bring this one back over. <laughs> and I have some stickers here. We'll go ahead and we'll add these on now before we add on our painted design. So these are just some regular stickers. And I'm going to add one to the front here so that we can write on our organizer so that we actually know what's inside of it. So that is one. It's kind of starting to look like a real desk organizer here. Then we're going to go ahead and flip it over to the back because sometimes people slide them in from the back. And that is how they choose to read them. So if you choose to do it, you would add it right here. I think mine is around here somewhere, guys. I'll find it. And we'll get that added on there last. But if you were going to do one, you could just add it right here, guys, and that way you have one on the back and on the front right here. So let's move this out of the way. I think it might have fell, but that's okay. We're going to keep moving. So now I have our treasure gold paint here. This is actually the champagne color, which I really, really love. I love any type of metallic paint. I think it adds a little bit of glam to everything. I think it makes it look a little more expensive. All right, and then I'm going to use this tiny spouncer brush right here, and I'm just going to go around and add dots all over. If you know me at all, you know I love dots for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't think I've actually identified why just yet. I just love dots. I love dot patterns. So let's see. what we come up with. Okay, so whenever I start to paint with the sponge brush, I just kind of like to get it fully covered first. I don't just go straight into painting my project. I kind of tap it off to the side first on a piece of scrap paper just to see, especially when I'm doing dots, just to see how it'll look first. All right, so I think we're good to go. Add a little bit more paint. And then we will just start going in and adding some dots, you guys. And like I said, this is my design, but you can get creative with this at home. You can do whatever you love to do. And if you choose like a pre-designed piece of cardstock or scrap of paper, you might not even have to do this, but I really wanted to incorporate the treasure gold. So this is the way that I chose to do it. So let's go ahead and add in our first dot. I thought that this would be really fun for someone that's in middle school, and someone who doesn't necessarily know how to paint. This is in detail. I think with the spouncer, it's just really easy. You just kind of go in and add in your dots randomly. You don't even really have to think about it. I love something that you don't have to think about too much. And I love making people who think that they are not crafters or are not creative feel like they actually are. And I feel like this is an easy design that anyone can do, no as matter we, your craft skill level. <laughs> as you're doing that, Bianca, we've had um, some new viewers. We've got Washington, New Jersey, and Ireland. So you got Ooh, your international Ireland. person. So welcome, guys. Bianca is making some desk organizers, upcycling some cereal boxes here. And yeah. she's applying treasure gold um, to the outside with a little spouncer. Yeah. I would love to know what the weather is like in Ireland. <laughs> I don't think I've ever asked that question before. <laughs> sure. But yeah, guys, we are upcycling some cereal boxes and turning them into file organizers. Crafting can get very expensive sometimes. So upcycling is always a way to save a few dollars. And it's just fun. If you missed what I said earlier, I love giving old things new life. 
So as you walk around my house, you'll see a whole bunch of things that are not supposed to be what they are now. <laughs> I think I have a suitcase that's a dog bed. <laughs> a lot of wild things. And then if you guys are unfamiliar, um, Bianca is using our Folk Art Treasure Gold paint in the color Champagne. It might look kind of yeah. grayish on camera, but in person, um, once it's dry especially, it's going to be kind of a shiny, um, a super lustrous yeah. metallic paint in that um, kind of in-between silver and gold color. Yeah. Yeah, this is really, really nice when it dries. All right. And we'll just add in a few more here. And then we will glue our boxes together. And we got your answer um, as to the weather in Ireland. Okay. Not a great summer so far, a lot oh, of rain, man. so. That's kind of the same here. Yeah. <laughs> that is not too far off from our current forecast. Hopefully, the rest of the summer won't be dry, but it won't be so wet. All right. So I think I'm just going to do a few more dots. Not too many. And if you guys are interested in Treasure Gold, we have a full line of colors. It's totally water-based and non-toxic. We have great um, eight ounce sizes for you guys who are doing really big projects, four ounce, um, two ounce. There's a lot of different sizes on that. So you guys are able to get um, a really great metallic paint. Yeah. All right. And if you're just tuning in and you missed what type of Mod Podge I was using earlier, I am using the matte formula. Okay. So I think that's all I'm going to do on that side. Let's add a few to the back here. I'm going to leave the front blank just because that's where our label goes. And I don't want that side to be too busy. So we'll add just a few to the back side here. And let's try to round that one out just a little bit. All right. Yeah, I really love this color. It's like the perfect metallic silver almost at the end we'll be able to show you the other examples that bianca has and those are dry and they've got big bands of the champagne um, yeah color on them, so you guys can see that yeah and i'll explain to you how i did that perfect which is really really easy but like i said i just wanted to switch up the designs just so you could have two forms of inspiration maybe one for your preteen and then if you are just an adult like me and you just like for everything to be cute, I think my design off to the left here is a little bit more mature, but maybe even somebody in high school might like it too. Okay, so let's just add a few more dots here. Go down. Did we get anyone telling us what they're working on at all? I or any projects here. that you've done in the past. Yeah, we've got a lot of big plaid supporters here that use a lot of our products every day. Yeah, let us know what projects you guys are working on right now. Yeah. Okay. So this, of course, is not dry just yet. But I'll go ahead and I will set this one off to the side for just a second. And we will... Add some Mod Podge to the side of this one. Let's add a little bit more in here. And I'll show you how you can combine them. And then I'll pull out my finished product over here to the left of me and show you what it looks like when it's all the way dry and put together. So again, if you were not here earlier, I suggest using a light coat of Mod Podge. You don't want to go too heavy. You don't want to saturate your paper. Even if it is cardstock, you just don't want to go overboard. You don't want it to bleed through or soak up your paper or even the cereal box itself. All right. Oh, 
Okay. Let's even maybe add just a little bit to the inside of our other side as well. Not too much. Again, just enough. Alrighty. There we go. All right. Just a little bit more here. I will definitely have to try the blueberry cereal when Halloween comes around. So thank you to whoever suggested that. Mm -hmm. Never heard of it. Okay. So I'm going to flip this over and then I'm going to add it to the other blank side of our existing cereal box. All righty. As you're doing that, Cindy, let us know that they're working on um, Christmas in July projects right now Ooh. on their page. Christmas in July projects. That sounds really cool. Yeah, thanks so much for using plaid paint, Cindy. Yeah. So let's get that one Just a second. here. Let's grab this sticker. We'll add it to the front of this one. So let's flip this over. So you can kind of see it's falling apart just a little bit here. But that is okay. Because I have our finished product over here off to the side. So this is it, you guys. This is it combined. Is this from the top? Yeah. Are you guys seeing this from the top? Yeah. Okay, so yes, that is it. So this one is unfinished right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and set this one off to the side and grab our finished product over here, which has our labels on the back, both of our labels. I know we lost one earlier, but this one actually has two of them. And then instead of doing the, bo the dots on this box design, I chose to go with these strips down here and all I did was use painter's tape to try to create the straightest lines possible. This is one of those crafts where it's gonna be perfectly imperfect, so don't freak out if your lines are a little bit off. Um, you just gotta try to do your best. So I kinda went all the way around the box here, and then I added two more labels to the front side here. And that is pretty much it, you guys. And then of course I have my books inside of here. It's just like a file organizer that you can grab from the store, guys. Honestly, if you have this up on the shelf and you have it tucked back, no one's going to know. How would they know? <laughs> Isn't that what they say on TikTok? So that is our cereal box file organizer. Again, we use Mod Podge matte formula, and then we use the Treasure Gold Champagne. I will bring this out for you guys. Let's hold it down so you can see the labeling. Perfect. I don't want it to spill out. No, you're good. Okay, <laughs> yep. Treasure Gold Champagne. And I will go ahead and pull the Mod Podge out just so you can see that as well. Perfect. Yeah. And that is it, you guys. This is a really easy craft. Um, like I said, this can be great for dorms. This can be great for lockers. If you aren't off the college just yet, a really fun, inexpensive way to keep any space organized. And if you're a teacher, I think this would be great for your classroom as well. So that is it, you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. You can find me on Instagram at I am Bianca Octavia if you want to see all of the other projects that I've made using Treasure Gold and Mod Podge. I would love to see anything that you create at home with these projects. Again, tag Plaid, tag myself, and we would love to come and give you a big thumbs up on your project. Thank you guys so much for joining us today, and we will see you next time.